Hey everybody, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe to Savage Camper. Slide out counter, slide out sink. This is the platform for a water jug that sits over the sink. You've got storage in the back there, 50 amp hour AGM battery. You have 12 volt power panel here with USB ports. There's a 12 volt socket there. And then you have a slide out fridge freezer unit. The only major work I've done since the last video was cut out this section here. These notches are for the storage of the solar panel, which is folded up as a suitcase currently, and you can see how it fits. There's clearance so the fridge freezer can still slide. And the reason why I have this here is because I can save space, it's very compact. And the other reason to make this thing very stealth, I'm gonna build a lid that's part of the video today that goes over this that's carpeted. And this is basically the lid. It kind of has a slight beveled edge here in the front. I tried to match it to the Renegade's curvature. Tried to keep this tight on the sides and the back. This is really a much more complete picture now of what I had envisioned for the Savage Camper Kitchen. This plywood is not gonna hold up in an outdoor environment. Water doesn't play well with it, it'll soak it up. If you're cooking and let's say you spill some oil or something or grease, it's gonna soak right into this and then maybe it'll smell later. It's just gonna get dirty. You can see my scuffs already. So the most economical solution I came up actually with is this, this Flex Seal stuff. You may have seen the commercials. Liquid rubber sealant coating is what this is. Now the brush on stuff is, is touted as non-toxic. And this is not, I believe it's because of the solvents in it to get it to an aerosol. But once that evaporates off, it should be fine. It's basically just a rubberized coating. I tested some of it here. And as you can see, you know, it's really durable. So it's gonna make these boards stronger, basically in budget composite. I finished spraying a couple of these panels with that flex seal and they turn out great. They feel more armored. Last couple days I finished spraying these panels with flex seal and this is basically an exploded view of the cabinetry.
Right, looking over the back seat, you can see the lid here, all carpeted, nice and clean. And I had my son look at this and he peeked in here and he said, I don't see anything. What am I looking at? And that's exactly the result I was hoping for. Here it is, packed away. All right, so let's take a closer look. As things currently stand, the Savage Camper kitchen is about 95% complete. Over here, the only thing I really did over here was I used a hole saw and cut some holes in this panel here just to lighten the load a bit. The refrigerator is currently plugged into Savage Camper kitchen power. And you can see here, the fridge freezer will still slide in and out even with the solar panel packed away and the lid on. One thing I need to still work on is I need to come up with a solution so I don't have to deal with this wire here. If you've been following along, you can probably see that I definitely upgraded the switch panel. It's now mounted in aluminum, whereas before it was mounted in this panel here. And I really didn't like the quality of it, so I decided to upgrade this. And there's many more upgrades I'm going to show you as well. Then moving over to the left side here, let's take this lid off actually. And with it carpeted like this, this would actually make a nice table. So I plan to, to add some legs that fold out on this somehow. And maybe it'll stand roughly a foot high. It would be nice for those low camping chairs as a table for plates or drinks or to play cards on it would make a really nice table let's unpack the solar panel here and if you've seen the other videos you're familiar with the slide out table here slide out sink you can have the sink out without the table and the water jug sits up here like that also, to slide this table out, we now have, back in the storage back here, the Coleman stove. This is a dual fuel, 533. It's way too heavy for backpacking, but it sure makes a nice small camp stove. It works just like uh, the old lanterns where you pump it up, add pressure, and you can fill this with either Coleman fuel or you can actually even use unleaded gas on this stove. All you need from that point is a lighter and away it goes. It works great. And you can get this on Amazon. That's where I got it. And the other nice thing is the price. This was $68. All right, so let's go back to the Savage Camper Kitchen off-grid power compartment here. If you've been following along, and now you see this, you've probably noticed that there's been some significant changes. So let's go through it. First thing I'd like to show you is these foam tubes, which are padding for the solar panel. This is just some foam insulation that's from like Home Depot that you use to insulate pipes with, like copper pipes. And I sprayed it with this Flex Seal stuff and it added kind of a rubberized armored coating. So I think they'll hold up a lot better with the solar panel packed away in here. Before I had a 12 volt socket up here. This is it here. But I found that the fridge mail adapter for this did not fit well in this. This seemed to be a really cheap socket. So I relocated that. I'll show you that in a bit. And this is the original switch and it shows the voltage here. And then you have your USB power here. Originally when I had set up the switch panel on this here, I just had a simple single blade fuse holder and alligator clips going to the battery. 
But what that prevented me from doing was adding extra circuits. Every time that I want to add a new circuit, I would have to add new alligator clips to the battery. That didn't make a lot of sense. So now I purchased this blade fuse, automotive blade fuse box off of Amazon. It'll hold up to 10 fuses. It's way overkill. They even have a six fuse one. That would have been better. And then this over here is a common ground negative terminal. So as you can see in here, I have three different fuses. So there's three different circuits I've created. And coming off that fuse box is just now one alligator clip and same with the negative. Down here, I kind of came up with this way to lock in the battery. I built a box around the battery and then created this locking mechanism where that rod has a cotter pin on each side and it slides out either way, then you can slide the battery out. Up here, you can see this bracket. I have a couple of these, one here and one in the back to add strength to the camping unit as a whole. And the way I did this, I decided to try out this Benzomatic aluminum brazing rod which you can get at Lowe's and I maybe Home Depot as well and on Amazon as well. But I tried brazing this together and making this bracket. It turned out okay, it was pretty strong, it seems pretty strong, and we'll see how it holds up. Up in front here, you probably recall if you've seen the previous videos that this panel used to slide out, but again, the quality wasn't great, so now I changed this to just Velcro. Now that I moved the switch panel up here mounted permanently. And you can see that's what locks the battery into place. It's a little crooked. I need to fix that. <laughs> I kind of figured that this might be a nice space to set a cup or something when you're standing out here if you're, you know, cooking with your stove over here. The other reason why I set this back is you can see here I used a hole saw to cut these spaces out. Just to show you how versatile this flex seal rubberized coating is, when I drill holes in this already coated wood, I can just go back and shoot some in the, in the cap here. Just get a throwaway brush that I've been using here. And just recoat the inside of these holes. It's probably not hard to determine why. You can see the venting on the fridge here and there's a fan that runs in there. So that fridge compressor needs to keep cool and this gives it some air to circulate with. Let's fold the seat down. Originally this panel here on the back, I had bolted it in and I was going to use it for structural purposes, but this is just a thin piece of plywood. It's not gonna do much. So I came up with a better way to brace the kitchen unit. And now this is mounted on just with Velcro instead. And you can see you have access here. This is where the camping stove stores away. I still need to probably put a facing here. And what you'll probably really notice is, hey, there's a plug there. So what I did is I went ahead and picked up a 12 volt socket and it has two tabs on the back for spade connectors, the positive and negative, really easy to set up. So this is one of my circuits that I wired in to the fuse box is this plug for the fridge. Just 
Just finished mounting the 12 volt socket here. You can see it has spade connectors, so I made these wires that are going to run out to the battery to power. So this is the fridge now running directly off Savage Camper Kitchen Power, as you can see here. You can also easily do this from the front, just reaching over this shelf here. But if you want to switch from Savage Camper Kitchen Power to Renegade Power, all you have to do is unplug this and just plug it into here because right here is your 12 volt socket on the Renegade, which I used a hole saw and cut access to. And finally, my favorite feature, the Savage Camper Kitchen Nightlight. With removing the 12 volt socket from here, it freed up a port and I added an extra switch here. So we have our 12 volt readout, we've got the USB ports, and now on a separate circuit here, I have LED lights. These are Amber Automotive 12 volt LED lights. These are Osmium LEDs that I purchased off Amazon. Man, they are really cool. This is 0 .2, 0 0.02 amps, it's flush mount. The yellow light I thought would be good because it doesn't tend to attract bugs like white light. And I mounted one underneath the water jug here. There's one mounted under here. You might've seen it in the bracket sitting here. And then there's one I created a mount here. What this one's for is a night light. You want to go to the fridge you now have a light to access let me show you what this looks like at nighttime overall I'm really happy with the way the Savage Camper Kitchen turned out it's been a lot of work a lot of time and energy, but I think it was well worth it. I can't wait to get this thing out in the field and test it out. And that's what's coming up in the part five episode is I'm going to get this thing out in the field and test it. And I'm also have some more upgrades planned. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. If you haven't seen our previous episodes, please catch up on that. And again, please subscribe to the Savage Camper YouTube channel. See you next time, everyone. Peace out.